People on the internet be telling me I'm emasculated, and I thought it could be worth looking into what that could possibly mean. Right, one definition involves removal of the male's sex organs, and that's none of your business. The other one, the one they mean, is someone deprived of their male identity or role. Calling me this is clever because it's an insult with implicit pity. Like, I've been emasculated by the pacified society, or FEMINISTS, and I know not what I do. That's an understandable take, because I don't subscribe to male culture as far as I can help it, and if you're an irate male stranger who smudges their thumb over my Facebook profile, you'll find me in makeup and kind of long hair and oddly attractive. So by some definition, I'm emasculated, and I'm cool with that. I don't really see it that way, though, because I don't think I was ever masculated. Masculation, if you will, is the assigning or presuming someone a male identity or role. We do this to half the population, and we feminate the others, I guess. We impose gendered expectations and habits to perform. So if you can say that someone was deprived of their male role, you can also wind it back a bit and say that a male role was festooned upon them. And that's a very fun word. Masculinity and femininity have very open, subjective definitions. We tend to present it, due to its basis on an interpreted binary, as a kind of sliding scale, when nothing's really that simple. Socially, gender is a reduced approximation of human character, like a Myers-Briggs test, or aura colors, or which golden girl you are. Dorothy. Except I'm not really that much like Dorothy, she's just the closest of the available options, and some days are more of a sphere. Our expectations of masculinity and femininity, though, can cause a lot of damage. Binary roles are a great limiter to everyone trying to tell us what we must be and what we can't be, based on an outmoded ideal of biology as if we all still need to hunt and gather. Some cultures are so heavily oppressed by religion and traditional standards that it's heretical or even illegal to avert gender norms. We should not have stuff like that, nor should we have the traditionalist judgments that point the same way. I've no interest in pursuing masculinity. I've developed a distaste for it due to its cultural dominance and oft careless ways. When internet fuckwits lament soy boys and new males or whatever, they speak from a fear of gender standards being undermined, and themselves losing access to the binary that they think they're comfortable in. And they may well be comfortable in a lot of ways, but there are other ways that it hurts them, and it definitely hurts others. A fun little linguistic aside here, have you ever noticed that the word emasculate describes a man as less manly than he should be, as an insult. And the word effeminate, which looks like it might be the female equivalent to that, describes a man as more womanly and thus less manly than he should be, as an insult. The words have separate etymological paths, but it's interesting how strongly predisposed our culture is to lionizing maleness and othering femaleness. Femininity has its own issues, seemingly being defined in the shadow of masculinity, applauding traits of empathy and beauty, but not standing up for oneself. That's not feminine. There are good things within both what we call masculinity and what we call femininity. Things that are welcome in people. But to cast such a strong dichotomy is stupidly reductive. If it's emasculated for a man to be less limited by the cultural restrictions of masculinity, then that's a wonderful thing. Let's emasculate more men. 